And it did indeed play out. Brock Purdy became the starter once Jimmy Garoppolo got injured late in the year. Brock Purdy carried them all the way to the NFC Championship. He got injured when he was hitting the elbow by Hassan Reddick, but good to go when the regular season started, even though, even though, Shan- and I wonder if they asked Jed York about this. They still haven't asked anybody about this. Brock Purdy said on the record that Shanahan told him last year he wanted to sign Tom Brady, and they still haven't been asked about that. What a different alternate universe we would have if Tom Brady was the guy getting ready for the Super Bowl with the San Francisco 49ers, and who knows whether they even would be. Brock Purdy has been great. I mean, Peter, we've been raving about it all week. The way he makes the decision to slip through traffic and run with the ball, and it's not flashy. There's not a lot of panache to it. It's not as exciting as watching Patrick Mahomes run around with his hair on fire, but he just goes. And he had multiple great runs on Sunday that that I think made the difference between winning and losing for the 49ers. You know, Mike, uh, Kyle Shanahan said that after the game. I was in Santa Clara for that game and spent a few minutes with Brock Purdy afterwards, and I asked him about the runs. And... You know, there's two things about my time with, with Brock Purdy. Number one, this was, to him, not that big a deal. Where you saw that how weird it was that he got stopped by Debo Samuel, perhaps, from scoring a touchdown. And in his 25 previous starts in the NFL, he had never run for more than 17 yards on a single run. And here, twice in the span of 15 minutes, he ran for 21 yards each time and also had a 10-yard run. So, and he basically just kind of shrugged his shoulders and said, I, there was nobody there. I had to run. I did. I'm not awful running. So I had a lot of confidence I was going to pick up what I needed to pick up. And here's the other thing is somebody else with the Niners told me. They said that, look, you are not going to defend Brock Purdy the way you defend Lamar Jackson, where there would either be a spy on Lamar Jackson to, you know, to make sure that if he got out of the pocket, you were going to be able to at least be competitive to tackle him. So the intermediate area of the field, likely, if you have a bunch of downfield routes called, the intermediate area of the field is going to be fairly open, and it was. And I think the one other thing from talking to Purdy that was so interesting, at least to me, is that when I asked him what happened at halftime, Mike, do you mind if I just read you this little bit uh, of this quote from Brock Purdy? I, you know, because we are conditioned in the media to say, okay, somebody stood up and made a fire and brimstone speech and did this, and man, that turned it around. And I can tell you that 95% of that is bull crap. Bull crap. Because, and, and let me, so let me just read you, Brock Purdy, right here. I said, what happened at halftime? With your season on the line, what, what happened in there? And he goes, Kyle's writing up the plays we're going to start out with in the first drive of the second half. Everybody's eating, drinking, refueling. Not much said. We're just listening to the plays that he's going to call, what he expects the defense to do. There's so much experience and veteran leadership on this team where guys just know what their job is and what we have to do. There's not a lot of rah-rah or anything. We need to get points on the board, get first downs, convert third downs. Defense has to get stops. Sure enough, we go out there and do that. That was it. Nothing more than that. So I understand that Fred Warner did say a couple things at the half. Shanahan said a couple things at the half. That's not the reason why they won this game. The reason why they won this game is you had a quarterback who is impervious, in my opinion, to pressure. And he he's going to play the same on every snap. And if it's not good enough at the end of the day, they're going to lose. And if it's good enough, they're going to win. But it's not going to be all the hocus pocus that people think happens uh, inside football. It just isn't. It's how you adjust at halftime. Now, I do believe at halftime of this game that there was a f- there were a couple of come to Jesus moments with this defense. That defense got embarrassed uh, in the first half against Detroit, and you know with a couple of little changes that were made. 
And I think, as we talked about earlier, Mike, that Ben Johnson sort of changed how he called this game. They pulled it back a little bit, and that wasn't good for the Lions. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.